Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 2.6. In this video, we're going to see how we can take HTML, uh, A-Frame objects that were created using the basic components in HTML and clone them so we can use them in JavaScript. So let's get to it. So you may be in the situation where you started designing something in A-Frame on the HTML side and created all the you know, components and added the attributes and positioned them accordingly. But now you want to transfer all this information over to JavaScript so you could possibly mash produce or, you know, add some interaction or animation. Taking this over to a class to add all the components that you had in HTML would require a lot of time and a lot of code. So there is an easier way of doing that. And we're going to start off with just do, doing it on the script side directly. And then we'll see how we can integrate it into a class. So let's create a couple of variables here. So I'm going to say clone and snowman. So the first thing we'll have to do if we want to use pre-existing uh, objects that were created in the HTML file is that hopefully you've contained it in some kind of an entity. And that way we can give that entity an ID. So let's go ahead and grab that snowman. And this, this becomes our template that we'll be able to use throughout our program. And just for the sake of you doing something different, I'm going to use the get element by ID instead of using the query selector, which allows us not have to specify the hashtag when grabbing it. All right, so at this point, we've grabbed the entity with an ID of snowman, which is all of this. Now, you're going to love this next part. Now, let's create a clone. And the way we create a clone is by taking that element that we just grabbed and do clone node true. I'll let you explore what the true uh argument to clone node does. But trust me when I tell you, this has now made a copy of the snowman. And what we can do now is with this clone, we could treat it like we do everything else. Uh, so we can do a set attribute on it and let's position it somewhere else. And let's position it, let's say a little bit to the left. So I'll say a negative, maybe maybe not so much. And we'll position at a y of zero. And then maybe we'll throw a little further back, maybe a z of negative 10. And now let's add this clone to our scene. Oops, I guess I should have moved a little further to the right. You could kind of see it. It's right there behind the other one. Uh, so let's move it negative five. Okay, so again, with essentially one line of code, we were able to reproduce all this HTML uh, that produced this A-frame object. So let's now go ahead and take that same concept and just simply put it in a class. And let me go ahead and grab, really just, let's see, how should we do it? I will do it with this. <laughs> All right, so typically in a class, you know, we have our constructor, we assign some variables for position, and the very first thing we end up doing inside a class is we create an entity uh, component. What I'm going to do is that instead of creating that entity component, I'm simply going to clone the snowman. And at that point, we essentially have all that code that we have here, along with all the appropriate set attributes uh, for the radius and the color and the position. Again, I want you to think about if you were to do this individually for each component, uh, you would easily end up with somewhere close to 100 lines of code just to produce the snowman. So now let's go to our world over here and let's simply create another snowman. We'll say uh, frosty is equal to new snowman and let's position them uh, to the right and we'll say also negative 10 and that should be enough 
and there you go. Um, so I guess, oops, it shouldn't be one, it should be zero. So again, I, I'm a big believer in using classes to kind of abstract the code away from uh, the main program. So you saw here that with this one line of code, we were able to duplicate all the HTML that was produced, uh, that was used to produce a particular object with a frame. Now, something else you may want to do, and for this, I'm going to take it over to uh, an external browser. Notice, these are exact clones. So you might want to actually modify certain aspects of the clone. So I'm going to use that clone variable that we have here. So again, this is just a representation of this particular variable. And what you see here is that it's the actual entity. And if we open this up, it's everything that was in there. Now, through JavaScript, you know, we want to be able to maybe get access to some of these spheres. And the way we do that is using the getChildren function on a particular uh, object or element. The other thing, I, and I've made mention of this in previous videos. Again, this is web development. Uh, so some of these functions that you see here could be used in traditional web development. So the get children is not part of A-frame. It's part of JavaScript and HTML. Uh, so you could use get children to maybe get, you know, the elements that are inside of a div. So what does get children give us? It gives us an array with all the different components as they were listed in the HTML. So because this is an array, we could do this now. Let's say bracket zero. Now bracket zero gives us one particular sphere. Now based off that one particular sphere now, we can do a set attribute and perhaps change the color of that particular sphere. And you'll notice that for this bottom sphere now, we changed the color to yellow. And we know what they say about yellow snow. Don't eat it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take that same concept and simply apply it to our whole snowman. So let's do a, a, a little for loop. Actually, you know what? Let me do a little bit differently. Let's create um, another variable called components. And let's say this dot object equals get children. Now, again, this is an array. So this is giving us all those components, those basic components that are in here that comprise it. So now we can go through a for loop. And let's do, let's let, let i equals zero, i less than three, because we're only going to grab the first three spheres, which is essentially just the body. Um, the next two spheres are the eyeballs. We're not, we're not going to mess around with the eyes. And we'll do an I++. Plus plus. And now we'll do components bracket I. Again, allowing us to go through that array of children that gets produced by get children. Now with each of these now, we're simply going to use a set attribute. And we're going to modify the color of each of those spheres that are in that get children, or in this case, the variable component. So let's give it a try. And we'll see now that the snowman is completely yellow. Now, if you wanted to go a step further, I mean, we could add a, uh, another parameter to our snowman, allowing us to specify the color when we actually create the snowman. So let's say, uh, for whatever reason, let's just say we have we want a pink snowman. And there you go. And again, that could be a very nice feature of you know your clone components that you allow you allow yourself to modify the colors of it. Now I also want to go back to something I said earlier. Notice how all the work is being done inside the class. Again, always try to avoid um, doing work like this inside the main program. Let the main program simply focus on just the logic. So let's go back to our presentation and let's review what we've done. 
So in this video, we saw how we can use clone node uh, to make a copy of an entity that we have in our HTML that could comprise you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 components. And with one line of code, we now have access to that whole entity on the JavaScript side so we can mass produce it. Using the get children's function off of that clone, we can now modify individual components that are inside that entity. So hopefully you're excited to start cloning a bunch of your stuff that's in your virtual world and enjoy.